Dr. Jill Biden, who cares deeply about this issue as well. And I look out there and I see so many members of Congress who have led in this fight, so many of you who have never given up, so many of you are in, can, absolutely determined, as Murph and, and others are, to get this done. We've got a long way to go, which seems like we always have a long way to go. But I also, uh, today, we're taking steps to confront not just the gun crisis, but what is actually a public health crisis. Nothing, nothing I'm about to recommend in any way impinges on the Second Amendment. There are phony arguments suggesting that these are Second Amendment rights at stake from what we're talking about. But no amendment, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. You can't yell crowd, you can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater and call a freedom of speech. From the very beginning, you couldn't own any weapon you wanted to own. From the very beginning, the Second Amendment existed. Certain people weren't allowed to have weapons. So the idea is just bizarre to suggest that some of the things we're recommending are contrary to the Constitution. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic. Let me say it again. All right. Epidemic. It's not an epidemic. The only thing that's an epidemic when it comes to this whole conversation is how wrong people like Joe Biden, Democrats, get the discussion related to guns, gun owners. And notice and pay close attention to what's, what's probably the most scary thing in there is how he's talking about the fact that the Constitution is not absolute, that amendments aren't absolute, that this could change. Kind of threw that out there in the middle of everything else, like, well, we could change this if we want. He also says we're not, going to, we're not going after it. But he made that remark, and it, it should concern you. It's a, that's a huge red flag. We're going to talk about red flags in a different context here in a second. But here's what they're talking about. Here's what he kind of got into today in their first wave, because I guarantee him to you, and he said as much, that this is just their first wave. They want to tighten restrictions on ghost guns. Some of you commenting already, talking about the restrictions that do or do not exist already on that, which are basically handmade, handmade guns. Don't have serial numbers. And then they also want to go after pistol stabilizing braces, which if you have like an AR pistol or, or something like that, most of them come with that now. And it's been a contentious issue, and it's going to be even more so. I tell you, I'm not giving mine up. So he wants to go after ghost guns, stay, pistol stabilizing braces, and then he wants to attack red flag laws. Exactly, Red Voice. He wants to go after red flag laws that allows the temporary and or permanent removal of guns from people deemed high risk of harming themselves, harming others. If they're involved in trafficking, now obviously if they're involved in trafficking, that's a different case. But what red flags typically refer to is, hey, this person seems crazy. Then a cop comes, someone shows up, takes your firearms from you. We'll get back to that in a second. And then they want to invest in intervention programs in violent-prone communities. They, of course, want to go after, as he's said and made clear, assault weapons. They want to ban high-capacity mags. They want to do all sorts of stuff in the realm of gun control. But some of that stuff will take Congress. It'll take you know, others in D.C. that he just can't do through executive action. By the way... 